Hey there, I'm Weiss, and this is a song breakdown. All right, this one's going to be a little bit different because it's just an instrumental song. This is a Revolt of the Revived, which is from uh, Battles from Beyond. This is the, the closing song, and it's pretty short, as you can see. It's only like a minute and, and 30 seconds long, but uh, I, I feel it's very effective. So as with all of my orchestral songs, they started as songs for a completely different narrative-driven project. Then as time went on, I got better at making orchestral music, obviously, so these songs were, were sort of replaced. I thought it, it would be a shame if they never saw the light of day because I love them so much. So I polished them up, mixed them better, and, uh, and basically did all that I could to get them to my, my current standards as an orchestral music producer. This song, though, as opposed to most others from both Battles from Beyond and A Day at the Twilight Isles, is um, th this was a, a pretty recent one in, in terms of my progression as, uh, as someone who makes this kind of music. So you'll notice um, right off the bat, the first instrument is this authentic strings. I, I really love the sound. It's a synth sound. As I said with uh, my last breakdown with First Hater, I keep everything color-coded. I've got everything in these nice folders. Um, I'll, I'll unfold everything real quick so you can get a full... For a, for a small song, there is a lot of instrumentation going on. Usually I'm, I lead, uh, I'm a lot heavier with the strings, but going into this song, I knew that I wanted it to be uh, more brass driven. And uh, so I've got that authentic string synth, some South African singers, a whole bunch of per percussion going on, some snare. I've got a timpani that, that crescendos, but then I've also got some more hip hop stuff. Uh, just a, snare, a single snare, a hi-hat, and a, and a sub kick drum. Uh, you'll notice when I solo this, uh, this kick drum, the, there's this great distortion effect on it that I really wanted to, to make it sound super digital. Might as well solo out the hi-hats and snare. Same here, gave them this bit crusher distortion effect that makes it sound very digital, almost Tron-like. Then when I come over, come on, when I come over to the piano, harp, and bell folder, you'll notice all of this thing, all of this stuff is panned to the left, which is traditionally at least how I've observed it's done in orchestral music. I love the tubular bell. Oh man, that sound, I mean that, that just like calls back so many cinematic moments ranging from Van Helsing to uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula to Exorcist. It, it's a really cool sound. Here's the piano. Just in, uh, in arpeggiated sound. The harp is the same thing, but it's uh, not quite as fast. And the harp, there's something about that sound that just feels like it has this sort of uh, cosmic wisdom wisdom to it at least to me and when you stack these especially with the way the piano goes faster it, it makes the the harp feel very uh, sedated and then I also reversed I bounced this harp in place and I reversed it when you reverse instruments like a harp and like a piano it, it just has the coolest wind up effect and that actually isn't even this same sound. It, it is, but it's slowed down. So imagine there's this speed, this is double that, and this is double that. So it all stacks very nicely. I like to separate the high brass from the low brass. It just makes things easier in the mixing process. As I've said with other instrumental pieces, as it comes to gluing everything together, a compressor is a really nice way to do that. The low brass is sitting in the background. I wanted to put the, the high brass a little bit in front of the low brass, um, which is so, you know sounds like the French horn, which I have three of, one center, two off in different directions, some trombones, a baritone sax, the high brass is some, some trumpets, a couple alto saxes, and a couple tenor saxes. When it comes to compressors, the, the hard thing is, yes, it does glue everything together, but it's, it's really hard to put a compressor on something like that and not have it lose some of the life. 
it's really hard to explain, but it feels a little bit like when you put a compressor on something. Yes, it does sit in the background. Yes, it does glue things together. Yes, it does control dynamics and stuff. It can lose some of the life, as I said, some of the, the realness, which especially with orchestral music, when you're not using real instruments, is super important. That's why you do things like humanize these, change the velocity so they're not all played the exact same way, change the articulation so they're not all played the exact same way. It, I did that on the, the low breath to control dynamics. I did that on the high strings as well because they also sit in the background. Usually there would be more in here and I'd have uh, a low string section as well. And then you'll notice I have some plugins on each instrument. These are just reverbs and, and some of them use delays as well. I should have made a, a workable folder for the percussion. I'll just pull up the reverbs. Boom, boom, boom. Three of them. That easy. And uh, the, the first... 0.4 seconds, it's a little snare chamber. I, I use two reverbs on everything, so it sounds like everything is in the same soundscape. For instruments that I want to be most present, most in the front, uh, less muddy, I use the this tiny reverb, and then the secondary one as well, that's 1.3 seconds. For uh, instruments that I wanted to feel were pushed back in the mix, wanted them to feel a little bit more unclear, then I primarily used the 1.3 second reverb and then additionally used this 4.7 one. And I might have even at a point just used that third reverb. Yeah, so I did that with the authentic strings because that, that's a synthy instrument that already has so much going on that it didn't need two reverbs. Uh, using one reverb that is shared by all the other instruments was enough to make it feel like it was a part of the same song. And that's, uh, that's Revolta the Revived. I had a, a fucking blast making it, and I can't wait to make more shit like this.